Flannel Punk Radio, I'm your host, Corey Milton. Today's interview comes from the band Pal and Knife, who are at the Sanctuary in Detroit for their 2023 Lover's Game Tour. Yeah, I'm Alec. Uh, I do lead vocals and as well as the guitar. Uh, I'm Aaron. I play the drums and do some backup vocals, screams and stuff. Uh, I'm Chris. I play bass, do some harms, and do some scrams. So if you were to introduce your music for the first time, how would you describe it? Oh gosh, uh, I, I would say anyone who who's interested in that kind of sweet spot in between Midwest emo and pop punk, uh, but who also enjoys anime or other like I don't know video games, video games, nerdy D and D. I don't want to say nerd. Yeah, nerd culture feels kind of like a loaded word, but yeah, it's, it's weird now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Niche interests, niche fun, interests, fun, yeah. fun references. I feel like we try to include a lot of the things we're interested in and in, in, like the lyrical content. Looking for a good time. Yeah. <laughs> So how did everybody meet? Let's see. Well, you guys. Yeah, well, I, I guess we'll start from yeah, the beginning. From the, the beginning. very beginning. So basically, Aaron and I met in like 2010 yeah. through a mutual friend who wanted to start a band. And he said he knew a drummer. So me and Aaron met. And we were in a band for about two years. And then Aaron moved to Columbus. <clears throat> and I just stayed in Dayton. That's where, that's where we originated, where Aaron and I are from. And Alec. Um, and then so... Him. Coincidentally. Yeah, yeah, coincidentally, yeah. Um, and then I moved to Columbus in 2018. He met Alec. Um, we met... Yeah, what, I when was 2016? That? Yeah. Summer 2016. Yeah, I was working at OSU at the time in the student life marketing department. Um, and Alec was interning. And a co-worker of ours was like, hey... You guys like emo music. You guys should talk, and we started and we talking. Like, yeah, we like joked about it. We're like, oh, okay, ha. Huh. We like, you know, just found out we like some similar bands, and like that. That was pretty much like the end of like uh, our, our music discussion until like later that year when we randomly decided to jam. Yeah, he was like, I'm gonna bring my acoustic guitar to lunch, and I was like, I'm gonna buy a hand drum <laughs> and we're gonna jam. Jimbe. And, and so we jammed over lunch break and we're like, wow, there's like this chemistry here that I haven't felt in a long time. In fact, since I had been in a band with Chris, so I was like, okay, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't the right time until 2018 when I moved into a space where we could actually practice. Um, and then that's when I got my drums back out of the, the basement at my parents' house and we started we start going. Uh, yeah, yeah, I came and sang Fall Out Boy backup vocals at their little brewery show. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I that, skipped over literally that. Right after that. I skipped over yeah, that. Yeah, well, that, this is well, yeah, when I moved, when the, I came into the picture. As part yeah. of the, the yeah. Pal and I have extended lore. Yeah. Aaron and I did, like, an, we were an acoustic pop punk cover band. Yeah. Um, early to 2018 uh, at a local brewery uh, until that RIP, that, that brewery shut down. Mm -hmm. Um and then, yeah, once once Aaron moved into his new space and we could use a full drum kit, that's when we kind of got the ball rolling. And that's coincidentally right when Chris moved back. Into, yeah. Or moved to Columbus. Yeah, it was funny because I was like, I'm going to go see my friend in this redhead fella he's playing with <laughs> and literally come there without knowing what was going to happen and staying with them. And then, hey, you want to play bass? And I was like, without hesitation, I was like, yeah. <laughs> And that's, I remember yeah. like the first practice with you, because like, like we, Aaron and I had probably been. I mean, we probably got a few jam sessions in with, yeah. with the with the drum kit uh, before. I think you like you before you officially moved in. I remember after the first yep. practice, I was like, that Chris guy is like so, brings such a good like charismatic energy. Like I just want to play music with him. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. and that's <laughs> and look at us now. Well, that's our, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite tour memory so far? There, uh, there's a few that come to mind uh, and also my, my family we have this saying that um, sometimes a good story is better than a good time uh, <laughs> so a, a, a example of that would be uh, a couple nights ago we were at was this wait was this after Chicago yeah so after Chicago it, everything's blurring together this yeah. is our first tour by the way so yeah. we're kind of learning everything as we go <laughs> uh, but after Chicago we drove about an hour east to the hotel we we had booked for the night and we show up to the hotel and we're like we put in our name and she's like I don't have that name <laughs> like oh no so it turns out we we booked the hotel like down the street and we went to the wrong hotel. Luckily it was only like a five minute drive. It wasn't that and then bad. we got to the new hotel and the the front was like they're completely redoing the front, so we had to like find a side entrance. We finally got our room and it was like the wrong room and it was at this point it was like three AM our time yeah, and we were, we're like, like slap oh happy God. in the elevator, like <laughs> we just wanna sleep. 
And I, and I uh, also heard that you uh, performed in a bowling alley. We did. Oh, yeah, that was our first yeah. show. That was pretty dope. Yeah. yeah in the uh, Indianapolis. Duck pins. Atomic Bowl. Yeah. Shout very out. similar vibes to uh, Dirty Dungarees at Columbus. Shout out Dirty Dungarees. Shout it's out a, Dirty Dungarees. Uh, a laundry mat that's also a bar and venue. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is really cool. <laughs> Um, uh, do you have any favorite fan moments so far? Oh, I mean, I, I think we got to talk about Augie. We have to talk about yeah. Augie. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Augie is a dedicated uh, Michigan fan of ours. Um, and since we just mentioned this is our first tour, we haven't been to Michigan. But he has been dedicated over the past year, couple years. A couple years, Probably yeah. since He's like driving down Ponderosa, to yeah. whatever shows he can in Ohio to see us. Wow. It's been wild. And the one time uh, we played Cincinnati, we opened up for Cliff Diver and Micro- Michael Sarah Palin. And uh, he drove all the way down from Detroit, basically, to Cincinnati and drove back in the same night. He is so yeah, dedicated. We, uh, we, we stayed at his, his, uh, yeah. his parents' place uh, he, after our uh, Madison show, and we, we played some disc golf the next day. It was awesome. Yep. Yep. And he was at the show last night in East Lansing. And he's gonna I be here tonight. He's coming tonight, yeah. so tonight. yeah, he's a he's a real one. Certified so. homie. Certified, Certified homie. homie. Staying at his parents' house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. They made us coffee cake in the morning. It was great. We were having van trouble, and his dad helped us with the van. Oh trouble. yeah. Our muffler was like we started go. Obviously, we had left Ohio, and by the time we were out there, we were like that muffler is looking a lot lower than it did. <laughs> uh, so we were like, we should figure something out. So he, uh, his dad, got some ramps up. And we were able to put the ramp up, and we sent Chris under there, yep. and yep. he tied it with a uh, chicken just wire. Just chicken wire. Moral support. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hey, <laughs> blue collar over here, baby. So somebody hold the, the flashlight while his dad. <laughs> no, there was no flashlight. <laughs> no. I had to kind of just wing it. Yeah. It was really just hard, hard to keep my head up. <laughs> so you guys have talked about this before in some other interviews, but I wanted our listeners to hear about it. Cause yeah. It's really cool. Tell me about the conceptual story behind New Game Plus and the overall theme of the album. Yeah, so I don't know how we – we came up with the name New Game Plus before anything else just because we were like, oh, that'd be kind of a funny, like, sophomore album. Everything's harder. Everything's like – you know, we've kind of really honed our sound and the things we want to explore in our music in the first record. So it's like how do we how do we amplify that and kind of distill it? Um, so that's where the, the name came from. So from there we were like, okay, look, we're going to really make this video game themed. How do we really dive into that? Like how, how can we start introducing more video game references into the lyrical writing? How can we, uh, you know, Aaron and I do all the artwork uh, for, our, for our merch and our album art. So we were trying to like figure out how to make all of the, each, each song tie back to a different boss as if you're, you're playing a video game as you're, you're listening to the album. Um, yeah, the... the concept of the overall concept narrative wise is that we've been sucked into this video game world by a rogue ai named plus and we have to defeat each boss to then escape and those different bosses and stories mean different things to alec mm-hmm. like so. different like little anxieties or, or, or fears kind of personified as one of the bosses um, and then plus is there in the center on the the album uh, is kind of like the ringleader of all of these different bosses. Plus being the snake, the AI. the AI. He's the, the big purple guy in the back. Like, ah. But the Snake King does make a uh, does come back. Uh, yeah, he yeah. does come back kind of. But it's not the it's real. Like we a, d- it's like a simulated snake. Yeah, king. Uh, yeah. Because we did cut that. his head off yeah. in yeah, the first did. album. Yeah. So he's dead. Which doesn't he? <laughs> um, he's an example of nostalgia. Yes, mm-hmm. like that's yes. Yeah. So like, it's like yeah. nostalgia, nostalgia personified, yeah. which which also connects back because uh, the Snake King on the album art is his his song is Weekend at Tony's, which is a uh, a song about loving your friends, but it's also a song about being kind of stuck on on some nostalgic aspects of your life. And I heard that this album is also sort of symbolism for COVID being stuck yeah, in lockdown. Yeah, it's like the oh, yeah. is the other part of the the story is. Um, you know, we're kind of stuck. We're trapped inside this video game, this this simulation. We're like in stasis almost, and I think that definitely kind of coincides with the the period that we were writing it during, which was lockdown. Uh, I think there's definitely some parallels there. The main line that we we say in the the opening track, and then again repeat um, on F and A sharp, uh, is the I'll I'll stay asleep until I'm out of dreams. So it's like I'm gonna stay in this simulation until I've kind of conquered all these things I'm dealing with, and I can. Uh, emerge out uh, a better person I guess. Could you guys talk a little bit more about the choice to incorporate a lot of 
anime and video game references in your music. I mean, we just <laughs> love that. We just love it. Oh, can I say that? No, I guess I got oh, okay. all the times. Oh, that you I'm do. sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I already flubbed. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I think it's just like a big part of, you know, being a creative and like an artistic mm-hmm. person. Which I mean, I play music, but I mean they're artistic in so many different ways. I think just incorporating things that inspire you. I think anime and video games are yeah. like one of the there's few like a, things. There's this like David Bowie quote interview thing going around. I, not gonna like try quoting it, but the is gist of it is, you know, he puts out records. No one really gives a. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, he's like, okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna combine. I'm gonna take my music. And I'm gonna combine the whole uh, costume, the theatrics, can combine these other passions of mine with the music to make something unique. And then once he did that, everyone like really loved his music. Um, so I think that's kind of what we want to do. We're like, okay, we already know that we like making this style of music. How do we? connect to the other parts of it to make it more unique how do we connect our love of video games how do we make a record that's designed to be listened to while playing your favorite video games Mm -hmm. um and i i feel like we've accomplished that i think yeah i something that also just came to mind is like the music the style of music that we are writing is the music that we kind of grew up with Mm -hmm. it's our touch on it um and i I, when i think back to that time that's when i was like really getting into anime and reading a lot of manga so it's like we're kind of fusing those two things and then now we're adding video game stuff right on top of it so it's just a one big homage to all the things that we love from our Mm -hmm. our uh childhood so one of my favorite songs off the album is and that's a rock fact (laughs) And that's probably one of the ones with the most consistent references from mm-hmm. Over the Garden Wall. Correct. So I wanted to know, <laughs> what does that show mean to you guys and why you chose to... Uh, I actually, I have the, I have like the Bluebird Stork Scissors tattoo on my arm. I just got this earlier this year with a friend of mine. Um, that show means so much to us, which is weird because, I mean, that show came out when I was in college. So it's like, it feels fairly recent to have garnered the cult following it has like globally but like in addition to me and my friend group um but i I don't know what it is about that show that i think scratches a lot of you know again like the the feelings of nostalgia there's something about fall i feel like that strikes a weird nostalgia note for for a lot of people yeah and also what i've noticed is like and this is in hindsight that it's kind of like you know he's in a simulation he's kind of struggling to find his way out of something that he's not even quite sure why why he is, but like it's so it kind of mm-hmm. relates in that way too. I as I was listening to um, the song F and A, I noticed a lyric where he said, "I want to wake up in Twilight Town." Yeah, and I just wrote Twilight Town and exclamation marks on my notes. Are you guys Kingdom Hearts fans? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I am. I don't know about yeah. these two. No, I, I played. Um, I didn't finish it. I played a little bit of the first and the second, and then also one of the Game Boy games. I forget oh, which nice. one. Chain of Memories. Chain of Memories. Yeah. Um, I never finished them, but I'm a huge appreciator of them. It's like if I had to describe it, just like if you're if you were a kid growing up in the 2000s, and when when you, as soon as you hear "Simple and Clean" come on the uh, the TV for like the first time, yeah. the the seeing the first trailer commercial for it, me and my sister were just like. We need we need this game. Like I don't this game. This trailer alone is making me feel like weird like feelings of I I don't even know. Uh, but the it's would be yeah. But, it, yeah. but it's weird because it's like you know when I'm like all of like eight years old. How am yeah. I feeling nostalgia for like Something from from a video out. game that features anime characters with yeah. or Square Enix characters with? But then Nightmare Before Christmas comes on. And you're like okay, this is a cool yeah. Game, so. mm. But yeah, no fantastic game franchise. Um, and then I think. The, the other reason I wanted to include that, uh, include at least one Kingdom Hearts reference, especially being with Twilight Town, uh, is because Roxas from Twilight Town, he has this sort of emblem that is very similar to the plus emblem icon that we leverage a lot on the album art. Very cool. Uh, I just want to ask you guys what are your favorite games? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, no. Mine's uh, pretty easy. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> The Last of Us franchise, hands down. Wait, not Ghost of Tsushima? That's what I thought you were going to say. Okay, like, okay, okay. <laughs> Every time hey, I walk what? past Chris's door, I hear, uh, yeah. wh- what's his name? Jin Already? Sake. Yeah, I hear, I hear, uh, I hear Jin, Jin Sakai <laughs> beating up people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, no, I was, that is a close second for sure. I would say after playing, because I just finished playing this part two of La- The Last of Us, 
like that that French those two games just within themselves they they don't nothing comes close like the gameplay of Ghost is great but like the story of Last of Us is just mm-hmm. my favorite yeah it's pretty great yeah well I have to say my favorite game right now and probably for a while has been Destiny 2 and I say that with a lot of shame I know no own it own it, baby. Own it. I'm, I'm own a Destiny it. addict they got me um as, but yeah, a, but, as a recovered Destiny addict, I, I have nothing but respect for the grind. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but besides that, I have to say Hades is probably one of my favorite games so of good. all time. Love that game. I think three games really come to mind. One being Elden Ring slash the, the Dark Souls franchise in general. And I, I held off on playing them for the longest time because of like all of the, the memes about them being extremely difficult. And then I started playing them and I was like... These are like the best games ever. Uh, so yeah, Elden Ring, Dark Souls, big fan. Um, Pokemon also. Any any Pokemon, all, I'm glad to return to time after time. Uh, and also also throw in Hollow Knight as well. Oh yeah, uh, that's a good it's one. It's like one of the best open world Metroidvanias I've ever played. Still waiting on that sequel. Still waiting. Silk Song. It's never gonna happen. Speaking of waiting on sequels, including Bloodborne, what is your favorite Souls game? Oh no. Oh. You know that answer. Yeah, I know, I know that answer for you. Is it Elden Ring? No, it's Dark Souls 3. Oh, it's Dark Elden Ring. Dark Souls 3. I thought it was Elden Ring. <sighs> Last time we talked about it, you said it was Elden Ring because they like took everything that they had learned yeah, from. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, okay. Elden Ring, is, I, is, I feel like, is the the objectively correct answer. It lets you jump. Um, <laughs> I, it, it might be a somewhat tied with uh, Bloodborne for me because Bloodborne was the first of the, of the Souls mm franchise that i played uh if i could replay bloodborne with like why don't we have that technology yet where you can like wipe your mind and like play a video game for the first time again that's some uh (laughs) black mirror (laughs) stuff (laughs) have you guys had a chance to play any games while you're on tour uh i've been playing marvel snap pretty heavy heavily while in the van um allison's been playing breath of the wild and i've been playing tears of the kingdom yeah i just wanted to get your thoughts on why are you so gosh darn relatable (laughs) <laughs> we make music by gamers for gamers yes. exactly uh i i think we're relatable because well i think i'm relatable because i didn't really get into like being in a band until i was in my mid-20s and i feel like i had kind of figured out myself as a person and i can feel very confident in including my interests and in, in my music and stuff i don't know i think i'm relatable because i'm just a sweet baby angel you are a sweet baby yeah. angel so yeah, we. I describe it. Uh, Chris is the Chris is the golden retriever in the cheetah enclosure to Aaron and I's cheetah. He like he's the one. That, you don't. Know, yeah, they do that. Zoos, it's a they thing. do this where like when they have like cheetah cubs, they have like they're very skittish animals uh, in the wild. So they have like a golden retriever puppy in the enclosure with the cheetahs that they grow up with, and like the golden retriever basically teaches the cheetah like how to like be chill be around nice. people and like socialize. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's Chris for us. Yeah, I think in yeah. this case, though, it's like not to be nice, but to be sociable. Because I'm the extrovert, they're the introvert. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah, it's a nice balance. You're, you're lucky you got us for this long, Extra, honestly. Extrovert, yeah. Sam, uh, extrovert <laughs> Sammy. Yes. <laughs> there is a DLC coming out for uh, New Game Plus. There is. just do a bunch of alternate versions of Jelly Boy. I want to hear, just talk more on that. Jelly Boy has very quickly for us kind of turned into a cult classic of our discography. So we're, we want to give everyone, I mean, we were also thinking about like in terms of like turnaround, um, being able to like put out something very quickly after the album was released, was released because this was kind of like a, a fairly spur of the moment idea. So, uh, it felt like a very easy song for us to convert into a bunch of different versions. Mm -hmm. Uh, And hopefully people like all of those versions. I noticed you guys did a cover of Ruby by Origami Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you choose to cover that song? What does that mean to you? So that Uh, there's a little bit of a story behind that. Yeah. So there's this, uh, there's a blog, um, called like no No earbuds, no earbuds. And, uh, they did this like annual compilation where they had bands they had cover cover other bands and then they release it um just like for fun and they had asked us to do it so we got on there and we're like what, what which band should we choose and we we're gonna do we were we were between like oso oso and origami angel yeah it, it, it was like a, a a list of bands that no earbuds had worked with in the past they yeah. kind of wanted kind of like this like cross 
pollination of like, hey, here's a new band that's covering a band that probably is similar uh, in genre to yeah. kind of like get some new fans and stuff. So we chose Origami Angel because people compare us to them sometimes, and we're we're huge fans. So we were really excited too. Mad respect. Especially fun. It was like especially fun covering a song that's a little bit older on their discography. So we felt like we had more room to kind of put our own spin on it. I want you guys to pick the next two songs that I'll be playing on this show. What? <laughs> Rob Zombie, Dra- oh Dragula. Oh, God. <laughs> can you play that? Can, can, actually, that's just, it's a great song, but also it's just funny. So you should definitely do that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Th- that's what, one. But Alec, what do you think? Um, can I, is it all right if I do another wild card song i need sure. to look up the name of it real quick uh, i don't make the rules here so one of my favorite bands right now is a japanese midwest emo band called ari garnon's friend and i would have to put on uh miracle by them it's it's quite fantastic what advice would you give to new up-and-coming artists build a community around you and your music oh, yeah like it's yeah. If you don't do that, then why are you doing it? We saw like, a little bit of that last night. Uh, oh, yeah, 100%. Yep. Yeah, shout out to uh, Goblin Zone. Goblin Zone, and Lansing. Lansing. Such a nice community of people. Yep. Uh, yeah. Our show kind of fell through at the venue that we uh, had booked it at, so they picked it up and brought it all together, and it was a, a beautiful moment. Yeah, it was yes. really awesome. Anything um, else? For me, I would say... Uh, play music with other people because I mean for me it it took me like like I said early mid 20s before I started playing music with other people Um, I was like a solo artist for most of my life and I feel like you you exercise such a different musical muscle when you're playing with other people um, that like is totally different from like theory or like writing music by yourself it's just like I don't know absolutely it's great (laughs) Um, and then I would say Play the music that you love. Like, play the music you want to play. Mm. Don't do it for anybody else. Don't try to do it because it's popular or whatever. Make what you want to make because that's where you're going to put your most genuine self into, and that's what's really going to um, click with people, Mm -hmm. and that's how you're going to find your real audience. Yep. So that's what I would say. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, I really appreciate you being on the show. I really, really enjoyed Ponderosa Snake House. When oh, New you. Game Plus came out, you sort of solidified yourselves as one of my top favorite bands. Oh my God! Wow, thank you. So much. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty much all time. So I, <laughs> this, I was stoked about this interview. Wow, I was stoked so about much. this show. Thank you guys so much for being on it. Of course. Of course. Yep. We really appreciate that. This is Chris. <laughs> this is Alec. This is Aaron. Uh, we are Palette Knife, and you are listening to eighty-nine point one WPHS.